wish this time. Okay, we're online. Let's go. Hello guys, good day to you. Welcome to this new video. I'm Adam from Happy Games, and today we're going to see Advent of Code. Yes, Advent of Code just started, one of December basically. And the fact is, if you don't know what Advent of Code is, there are challenges. There is a challenge each day for 25 days, and each challenge is going to be available after 24 hours. Basically, you need to solve puzzles or mathematical stuff. Yes, that's right. Advent of Code in in Godot. Yeah, Advent of Code in Godot. We're going to cover just the first one today. Hopefully, I'm going to do good. Anyway, like I was saying, Advent of Code, there are just puzzles about uh, coding problems, so you basically need to find a way to solve these puzzles. You can do it in whatever language you want, basically, and that's totally fine. We're going to challenge ourselves today <laughs> in with Godot, basically. We're going to use Godot. That's our environment, our true home. So I'm going to create a new project, and this is going to be right here, AOC. And we're in 2022, okay? And here we go. It's going to boot up. Everything is okay. And here we go. We have our project ready to go. So the first thing here is why doing Advent of Code? I mean, challenges are quite interesting and are quite good, but more important is probably the fact that you can actually learn new ways to solve puzzles. And that's great. I mean, I'm, I don't feel myself quite ready for this or... At least I don't feel myself a, a real coder, a real programmer. So this might help me to find a better way. I'm talking English because this is going to be a YouTube video for my YouTube channel, so that's why. If you want, you can actually go here on Advent of Code and you can click on Events and you can find all the other events. Everything started on 2015 and you can actually challenge yourself with all these other challenges here. And that's great, actually. I tried myself the 2021 and I just had one <laughs> one star basically each time you're going to solve a puzzle you're going to get a star and you should have 50 stars in the end if you have been so good to finish each puzzle and reach at the top of you know advent of coding basically anyway we're going to do the 2022 event and we're going to click on the first puzzle here so here we have our first puzzle obviously it's themed for Christmas, because we are in the, in the Christmas month, and we don't really care about that, because I'm not going to read that, but the fact here is that they introduce each problem a little bit with some background, some lore. And what we need to do is actually to find out which of those helps has more calories, so they know in case of need to, to whom to go to, basically, to ask uh, for extra snacks. And <laughs> that's, that's fine. And here we have our puzzle input. If we click on this, some data is going to be there for us. And like you can see, here we go. I'm going to grab all this data. Actually, Control A is going to be right. And Control C. Now, what we're going to do, we copy that, and we're going to start our project on Godot directly. So basically, the idea is that each out separates itself uh, by a blank space, and that's quite important. Now, what we need to do is actually to make sure that we kind of convert all this data in some part of an array and multiply each stuff together. So what we're going to do is just go here, we're going to create a node to D, and we're going to call this day one, and we're going to give a script to this, like this, day one. Fine. Here I'm going to put a variable, and it's going to be called raw data. And this is going to have the, the form of a string, actually. And you can see that it's quite bad. <laughs> it is actually quite bad. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see if I, I can do this in a better way. I'm not sure, though. Da -da -da. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. I need to understand if actually, actually I'm I'm doing it in a, in a proper way. Okay, we need to find a way actually to to write this data in a proper way, and I have no idea how to do that. So we we need to find a way right now. Let's see. Someone send me this. Okay, file write file contains string. Oh, that might be something that I can use definitely. So you you're telling me that I can save this definitely. It's great. It's a great idea, actually. <laughs> someone. Kid, kid is someone right now. 
Okay, okay, so basically I need to load content. Okay, nice, nice. That's that's a nice idea, actually. That's a nice idea, uh, kid. That's nice. Now, what we're going to do, so basically, we're going to go here, we're going to open our file manager, like this. We're going to create a text file, very easy thing. And we're going to call this raw data, actually. And here inside, we're going to put all our data. And this is great, this is great. It's just the right approach, actually. Thank you very much. We're going to create a function to load actually the data. So basically what we're going to do is function load data like this. And how can we do that? By creating var new, new file equals to file.new, right? Right, is, is this going to work? I'm going to see everything right from the editor here since I'm quite lazy. I'm in a lazy ass. And then we're going to open our file, basically, new file dot open, like that. We need a string here, and definitely, where is our string? Change this thing here. Uh, road data dot text, like that. And row data equals to new file dot get file like a test. Get file, get as a test a text like that and we file that close new file new file new file that close the file basically as long as i'm aware this is going to be improved in the four we're not going to have to do this thing to close to close files anyway in the end of the day basically yeah this is exclusive to godot actually this is gd script anyway i'm drinking some grog here very nice very nice grog Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is just unloading everything on ready. On function ready, we're going to load this data basically. That one. We're going to load data. Like that. Okay. And then we'll print this data just to be sure that everything is working. Now it's cold water. <laughs> it's cold grog. For real mans. Oh no, we made a mistake here. File read. <laughs> file read. File read. Fuck it. File read. Okay, that worked. That's our mistake, basically. Okay, we have everything like it was supposed to be, basically. Very nice. Very nice. Everything is working. Now, what we're going to do here is basically to create another variable, and this time it's going to be not raw data, but it's going to be data. And it's going to be an array like that. Now, in this data, we're going to somehow grab all this data that we have here printed. And we're going to change this data directly. <coughs> and basically summing every data here. And that's, that's, that's what we're going to do. So basically, we're going to sum all the inventory stuff of each elf, basically. That's what we're going to do right now. I need to, to, to clarify a little bit my thoughts here, right? I thought it would be easier, actually. How can I convert this in an array? How can we do this? I'm thinking if we really need data, basically, but, okay, var, uh, basically, what I'm going to do is get data equals to row data dot r split, and here we're going to put, basically, the string that we need, and it's going to be breaks, basically, and we're going to see that we, we will allow empty spaces, so this is going to be true, and that's all what we actually need. And this is going to give us exactly the same data right th like that. And here on data, what I'm going to do is basically, we're going to run a for loop. Uh, so basically we need actually a new function here. Function. Uh, some data. Like that. And what we're going to do here, we need a variable that is going to be basically the sum and for 
e in zeta, okay, if if e is different than mt, right, we're going to sum it, sum equals plus equals to e, basically. And else, what we're going to do is going to grab the sum, basically, right? And we're going to append it. So, really, we don't really want that. It's going to happen like this. Okay, I'm going to use the row data, basically, because row data, it's row, and that's fine. Okay. Okay, like that. Else, if it is something else... So it basically it is empty. What we're going to do is to append this data to data data dot append append and we're going to append this sum and we're going to clear the sum basically sum equals zero and last but not least we're going to print our data like this. Let's see if this is going to happen. Uh, we're going to sum data here. Okay, right. And let's run this. Okay, we have an error here. It says an integer and string, and that's fine. Okay, what we're going to do is just to transform this in an integer, like that. Let's run this again. Okay, <laughs> our array is basically empty. Very good. <laughs> Why? Why it's not happening? So somehow it's not working. It's not working. Let's see here. Print data like that or maybe i need something that is empty yeah it's it's empty why is it empty <laughs> can i append basically 10 here if i want okay oh it's not appending by any means anything that's strange that's strange maybe this is not happening i think this is not happening let's see here print i'm inside I'm adding and append. I'm appending. Let's see this if it's going to happen. Oh yes, it's not happening. It's it's not happening. So what we're going to do here is not to use else but elif basically. If elif e like that. So what we're going to do in this case e is negative basically. It doesn't have data. Do that, please, please do that. It's not doing that. <laughs> oh no. Uh, let's see if I, can, if I can do it like this. Can I do it like that, right? Right, no, I can't do that. <laughs> let me see here what I'm, what I'm mistaking. Okay, let, let's make some, some, some stuff here. Something like this. Let's make something like, like this. Print, row data. We're going to get one index one what is it going to print to us it's going to print one fine what print 10. oh okay seems to not print anything print 11 and it's going to give us one what does this mean oh basically this is what is happening basically probably this time we're going to get the right things Let's see if I can decide to have zero like that. What is going to happen? Yes, finally, we're going to... It's working. It's working. So this thing should be working right now, right? Right. Let's see if it's working. I'm appending. Okay, it says that it's appending, and that's fine. Because that means that we're inside the actual thing. Okay. Oh, and here we go. We have all our sums, basically. Very nice, very nice. Very, very good. It's so, so good. Okay. Let's see if this is real, actually. <laughs> Let's find if the first, uh, first five ones are what we're looking for. So, 11, 2, 2, 3. 6, 3, 2, 3. 10, 7, 2, 5. 10, 761 plus 
And actually, I think it's working. It, it should be okay. It should be okay. Okay, right. We're, we're doing okay. We're doing great. We're doing it good. Now, what I'm going to do is quite easy, actually. I'm just going to order all the data here. And it should, should be something here. Let's see. Append, append string, append, find, invert. Refine, resize, methods. Where is the array? I need an array here. Okay. I think that there's a way actually to to order things, if I don't remember bad. Count. Okay. Max. Right? Until the maximum value contained in an array. If all events are... Okay. So basically, I just can use max or min to get the maximum data, basically. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is... Let me see here what we actually are asked to, to be done. Answer. To begin, okay. Find the alpha, okay. So, we basically need to find which index is the, the greatest one. So, what we're going to do is here, like this. We're going to get that, resumed everything, and now what we're going to do is data.find. So basically we're going to print data.find. Okay, very nice. What variant? Okay, max. Uh, data.max, like that, right? Is this going to work? Probably yes. Okay. I'm going to give some empty spaces. And last but not least, we're going to print the max data, basically. I'm just curious to know which is the greatest data we have here. Okay. Let's see if it's working. Okay, this is the greatest data, and the answer is 185. I think since everything starts on zero, I think that it's 186, okay? That's the answer, basically. We're going to put it inside, okay? So, to make it clear, what we did here is grab raw data, and the raw data, basically, we saved it directly in a text file outside, because there was no way to actually format the data inside Godot, but just by pasting it. And it's such a huge amount of data that it's kind of very laggy to have it inside the editor. Then we have another variable that is data, that is an array. Basically, on ready, I'm calling this function that is called load data. We created this function actually to load the data directly from the file, and we put that as a text in this variable on the raw data. And we close that file. Now, the raw data itself, it, it has the same structure, basically, with all the empty spaces and breaks. And we can do that much with that kind of data, because we can it's just a string in the end of the story. So I call another... So I, I, I use the raw data, basically. I reset it to itself, split it by the breaks. And here, we're allowing, basically, the spaces. And that's quite important. Now, like you can see, R split is very such a powerful function, really, because it it manages data and gives you directly a pool array, a string array, basically, uh, with all this data, and it kind of makes an array arrive for you according to the the points you need to break it. Such a nice function. I didn't know about this. So then I called this other function that is called sum data, and this is going to make <laughs> some some you know is going to make some additions basically. And we have inside of some data a variable that is called sum, and it's set to zero. This is needed actually to, just to make sure that we don't get some errors during compiling everything. Um, and then I start a for loop, and I say for e, for i basically, sorry, for i in row data. So we're getting that data there. Okay, so basically I I start a for loop, and for i in row data that now is an array basically. And we're going to check if i is different than empty, basically. We're going to add to the sum the value of i. Since i itself is a string, we need to convert it to an integer. And if i, so if you use the normal else here, it's not going to recognize it. So basically, you need to do 
Elif, you need to specify what kind of condition you're going to, to check, basically. Elif i is different than empty space, basically. We're going to append to data the sum, and then we're, we're setting sum to zero. After that, we print the data, basically. We print data, and we find the index base, based on the maximum value, basically. So, data.find, and here we get the index of the... We, we find this data.max, basically. Then I give here some empty spaces just to make sure that it's separated, and I print the maximum value that is inside of this array, basically. And if we run this, it's going to give us 185. This is our index, basically. This is our elf. And the value is 72,511, basically. 511. Such a... I can say that. <laughs> anyway, the trick here, I think, is since uh, arrays are based on zero index, they start from 0, 1. This is not right. This, this, this needs to be added 1. It needs to be added to this number. So it's 186. That's our elf. What we're going to do is going to give this answer. And hopefully we did everything okay. And it's going to work. So let's try this. Hello guys, Andrew from the future here. Actually, I'm editing the video right now. And I did actually. I did it. I solved the puzzle. And I just misunderstood what the question was and somehow I gave the wrong answer okay this is the code basically is the same and it gives the right answer I just needed to add actually <laughs> the amount you know the biggest inventory <laughs> that's so stupid of me anyway guys uh, there's a part two as well where you need to sum the biggest three ones and there's some new data here like you can see and I use this function like sort, which is going to sort the data in an ascending way, basically from the smallest to the bigger one. And then I invert those. And by inverting it, by using invert, basically everything inverts, inverts from the ascending to descending, basically. And that's such a great thing because now I have the biggest values just on the start of everything. And from that, what I did was actually just run, just run a for loop basically in range three, and get the this data to do, to be summed together basically. And that was the right answer. So I have two stars right now, and that's great because somehow I managed to finish this first challenge. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Um, probably the video ends a little bit in such a strange way, but. Believe me, <laughs> it was not intentionally did. Um, if you want to come to my Discord, you'll find actually the solution. I just created a section where I'm going to put, you know, each uh, each challenge and each uh, each resolution, or at least how I do that. Uh, consider subscribing and leave a like and comment down below. Let me know basically how are you approaching this and if you're doing this with Godot. <laughs> it's quite fun. Okay, that's not right. <laughs> oh no, we just made such a bad, bad thing. The, that's not the right answer. Your answer is too low. If you're stuck, make you sure you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips on the about page. Oh no, we just failed. <laughs> Miserably, I think. <laughs> you can ask for hints in the subreddit. Please wait one minute before trying again. You guessed 186. Okay, guys, I think that this is all for today. Basically, we failed miserably. And no, since I failed, I'm going to ask you, how did you approach this if you're doing this and if you're making this? And let me know what's your solution, because obviously I failed. And obviously we can go to the subreddit here. We can go to the about page. And there's a lot of, of stuff here that, that may help the solution to get the solution of this. Okay, and everything here is, is such a mess, everything, because everyone is, is doing things, uh, is printing things, and is writing things. Anyway, this was all. See you soon. I'm Andrew from Yellowhead Games. Thank you very much for watching this video, and next time we're going to talk about other stuff.